We are very, very pleased to welcome Paul Keane to our meeting. Uh, Paul, for those of you who are not as familiar with him as some of us are, Paul is a photographer based in the United Kingdom. Um, as well as being a master FIAP, he also holds the eFIAP Diamond 3 distinction, and he was the first person in the UK to receive this distinction in 2017. 2017. He's also a fellow of the Royal Photographic Society and he has Master of PAGB distinction. So he is a very, very well qualified and a very distinguished photographer. And we are really thrilled to have him here this evening. Uh, he is going to share uh, his photographs and tell us something about himself and about his images. Uh, but Paul, before you do that, can I just ask you, what is it that motivates you to make your images? Um, well, I, we had a discussion about this, didn't we, on, uh, two days ago. Oh, that was for me and you, but this is for yeah, everybody yeah, else now. <laughs> yeah. uh, but subsequently to that, I've, I've thought about it a little bit more. And um, I think what actually motivates me is that I want to, um, I want people to enjoy the pictures that I've taken. And I want people to enjoy the things that I've seen. Um, there's a mantra going around this area, I don't know how far it's got, but um, some people are saying, don't take pictures for judges, take pictures for yourself. And I think that's completely the wrong idea because photography is a means of communication. And what you want really is you want people to enjoy the pictures. And so that's why I, I take my pictures to share, to communicate and to, to send to people all, all around the world. And if they if they love them as much as I do, then that's 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 great. Um, but I, I don't see the big, the point in actually pay, taking pictures for yourself. Really, it's um it seems a, a, a sterile thing to do. Um, so that that's why I do it really, just to just to communicate. Okay. And if your pictures speak for you, speak for themselves, then then that's that's brilliant. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I know you were telling me that you started off uh, as a photographer who was interested in, in wildlife, but uh, that you have expanded your subject matter and that's what we're going to see tonight. Um, but perhaps maybe you could explain how it is and why it is that it came about that, that you changed from being solely doing wildlife to all the other genres that, that you... That oh, you well, Phil, Philip's to blame for that, partly. Um, the, the other reason really is I, I started with a very small club. Uh, I was interested in, in nature to begin with, and that's why um, I got my first camera. Um, and I joined a, my small local club. And then after two or three years, uh, I decided to go to a club called Smethwick, which is a very big club uh, and a very progressive club and an, an international um, outward looking club. And I learned a lot from them, really. And I learned a lot from looking at uh, different pictures and different people's pictures. And as part of that journey from my club through the region, through the, the, um, the national organization to FIAP, I've, um, I've expanded my ideas and, and the things I take. And um, well, I'll, I'll show you a little bit later on how I really made quite a big switch. Uh, about halfway through my FIAP career. Okay, uh, just one final question for you before we start and before you share your screen and start showing your, your images to us. And that is that the, part, the first part of your presentation is entitled Diamond Geezer. Now, yes. I know you and I, we spoke, we don't understand what that means, but not everybody else might. So maybe you might explain that to us, please. Uh, in, in England, there's um, quite a rough area of London called and, um, you know, the, the original Londoners are called Cockneys. And uh, they have a language of their own. Uh, and if someone is a, is a, good, a good guy, uh, they'd say he's a diamond geezer. So when I got my uh, first diamond um, qualification from FIAP, I went into my local club at Smethwick and um, Peter Gannard, one of, one of the the good photographers there said, oh, it's the diamond geezer. So I thought I'll use that for my talk. Good enough expression. Okay, enough of us speaking with each other. Maybe at this stage, 
it's appropriate for you to start sharing your screen and and showing and speaking about your images. Okay. Uh, just before you do, um, uh -huh. for everybody else who's on the meeting, just to say at the end, we will have an opportunity if anybody else has any questions they would like to ask Paul after he's made his presentation, we will be able to do that then. So what I, can you hear me okay still? You can indeed, yes. Okay, so what I was going to show you was the pictures I'd, I'd used in this um, challenge um, to get to the Diamond 3. And, um, well, uh, no, I've opened Photoshop, I think. Hope not, just a minute. Yeah. But I hope Photoshop doesn't come up. Um, anyway, I, um, when I got to the, the Diamond 3, I put this um, little talk together because I, because I thought people would be interested in seeing the pictures that I'd used um, to, to get, you know, to progress through, through the levels. Um, so I explained to people because a lot of people, you know, are, are very... Um, well, they're beginners and they come from very small clubs. And I explain, explain the hierarchy from my, uh, the local club to the um, regional federation, mm -hmm. to the national federation, to FIAP and what FIAP is. Okay, um, so I explain all, all the levels. Um, when, I, when I was doing all the levels up to um, platinum, uh, I was doing it in slides or transparencies and having to send away uh, my transparencies in a box, um, which was quite difficult, and quite time consuming. And you can only send one picture away at a time and then you have to wait and hope it comes back and it's not damaged before you send it away again. So that, that was quite difficult, um, but it, it got a lot easier in a way with a diamond, although the levels, you know, you, you actually move up um, to a higher level. I started my AFIAP in um, 1992, or I got my AFIAP in 92, and then I had to wait three years for the, the platinum, sorry, the, the, the excellence. And then every two years after that, I, I, I moved up a level and um, actually managed to get the AFIAP platinum in 2003. Um, but while I was doing my, my EFIAP Gold, I, I had a, a real breakthrough because I sent um, a, a picture, nature picture to China. And I was awarded a gold medal in the Beijing International. And if, if you, um, it's, it's a really big international, but if you're really lucky, they'll invite you over to uh, collect the award uh, and go for a week's holiday on what they call photo creation. So I, I, I went the first year um, in 2002, I went to Jiaozua, which is in Henan province. And then three years later, uh, in 2005, I, had, um, I made, a con made contacts and friends in China. And in 2005, I had an email saying, did I want to go to Tibet? Um, so I said, yes, please. And I, I went to Tibet uh, and that was a fantastic trip. And then a year later, uh, sorry, two years later, I did an exhibition in Shandong, uh, in Jinan. And I went, I sent 50 of my pictures for a big exhibition there uh, and went, went for a photo creation trip there too. And then finally, in 2008, I entered another competition in Chengde, which wasn't a fiat competition, but uh, I'd been asked to enter by a, a Chinese friend. And I won a gold medal there. So that was really lucky. And I went up to Chengde, or Chengdi, um, which is the um, winter palace of um, the Qing emperors. And there are eight um, pagoda, uh, eight external pagodas. And that, is, that was really an amazing trip as well. So I got this collection of pictures that I'd taken in, in China. And when it came to uh, decide what to do for the, the master fee app, I thought I'll actually show um, the fee board what fee has done for me. 
Uh, and I said in my application, uh, I started as a, a, a nature photographer uh, with a projected immediate slides. And I became, as a result of FIAP competitions, uh, I've widened my experience and now I'm submitting a monochrome print panel uh, of people. So I've, you know, I've had a real um, education, if you like, and broadened my viewpoint through, um, through being um, involved in FIAT. And it's been really good for my photography and, uh, and really educational. So what I'm going to do now is to as I say, show you the pictures that I used for my diamond uh, qualification. Uh, and then afterwards, I'll show you the, the Amphiat uh, panel. Uh, this is, for people who don't know, this is what you have to do to get, get through the levels. And it's, um, it's quite a, uh, you know, you need to be quite strategic when you think about it. Um, how, you, how you actually manage to get through each level, each level because you, you need a certain number of acceptances, but you also need a certain number of different pictures as well. And sometimes you'll have more acceptances than pictures, and sometimes you'll have the other way around. So you have to work out which is the best way to do it and how to, how to get it. And I always um, think of this as um, a marketing exercise, really. And I, as I say, I, I like people to enjoy my pictures. That's, that's the whole point in taking it. And it's interesting when you send them around the world to see what different countries and different people like. And that's an education too. I mean, you don't send windmills to Holland and you don't send, um, I don't know, uh, pictures of sand dunes to Saudi Arabia. But you do learn um, what people like uh, and what will be successful. So it's a question of um, showing people um, the things that, that they'll enjoy, as far as I'm concerned, anyway. And I think it's, it's very interesting and very educational. So anyway, that's the, uh, that's the levels. Ah, am I still pressing the... It's, it's not moving now, Paul. If you, you should be able to uh, use the arrow keys on your keyboard Right yeah. arrow, left arrow. Yeah, that's what I'm trying, and it's not going. I don't know why. It's escape. We'll get there in a minute. I think this is the problem we had last time, wasn't it? It was slideshow and not um, full screen. There we go. Just let's try. Slide show. No, full screen, sorry. There we go, let's try that. There's, that's it, good. So um, what I've done with these, I've arranged them in order, the, the, these pictures in order. They've, they've all had some sort of award um, or other. Uh, quite often it's just um, a minor award, like I highly commended. Um, but I'll, sh I'll show you the ones how many times I've entered, how many times it's been accepted, and how many times it's won an award. So you can get an idea um, from, from looking at this um, set of pictures, which ones uh, are, success, uh, are successful. And I'll try and tell you why I think they're successful. This one was taken at the, Vel the Olympic Velodrome in London. It's not during the Olympics, it's a subsequent race. And I managed to get a press pass. So I was in the center of the Velodrome. But I don't think it's the best, um, best place to be, actually. I think uh, you can get better pictures on the outside of the track. So I might try that next time. It's not working, Paul. Mm. What is happening? My arrows on. OK, I am. Um... I, I think I, I don't. Don't know what's happening because I should go. Try again. There we go. So down the 
down the left hand side there, you can see that I've entered it 61 times. It's been accepted 25 and it's won one award, won one award probably highly commended. So this one is, is, was taken in one of my favorite places. It's in, um, in Queensland, Australia and the Whitsunday Islands. Um, what I should say as well, when I, I'm entering competitions, I try and enter all the sections. So if there's, there'll be a color section, a monochrome section, um, a travel section and a nature section. And I try and enter the whole lot um, because it keeps the cost down. It can get very expensive if you enter a lot. Um, and this I'll probably put either in the, in the, in the travel or in the color. Um, and that's, that's done okay. It's better than 50% hit rate. The normal, uh, normal acceptance rate is, is 25%. So if you get above uh, 50, it's, um, it, it's, it's a good thing. And you've got more chance of winning an award. So nature's getting very, very competitive now. And it's, it's, um, it's more and more difficult to, to do well uh, because nature photography has become so good. So you have to show, I think, um, tell a little story if you can with, with your, your nature pictures. Um, and in this case, these are our sets. It was taken in uh, reserve in the north of England. And I think what works with this one and why maybe judges like it is because you have the two parents in the background and the chick, uh, as all children do, going in the opposite direction to their parents. Um, I can't see what the pitch rate is on that one, but I think it's one, one, one award. I'm getting other things come up on my um, my screen, Paul. Ignore those. Oh, okay. Um, now this is is a bird called a bearded reedling. It's, it's common locally and in some places in England, usually down by the coast in reed beds. That's that's where it lives. But we were lucky. I live in the middle of the country, basically um, just uh, west of London, and we were lucky to have one come up on a local reservoir one winter and he stayed there for uh, a month or so and he was very very tame uh, so we managed to get some pictures of him um, and that works quite nicely as a print uh, and it's it's had a quite a good success rate as a print that five out of six and won an award um, this one uh, I've got a, a friend in Florence and he, um, as a treat, he took me to the Adriatic coast of Italy because the, these birds were uh, always on my uh, bucket list, something I always wanted to photograph. Uh, these are European bee eaters. And we had a, a day in a hide um, just opposite a, a, a nesting area. And that, that was a fantastic day for me. I really enjoyed that um, and got a lot of pictures that, um, that I was pleased with. That's, that's won an award. I'm not, you see, uh, what, what I, when I talked about strategy, I've not entered these um, pictures all that much. So maybe just eight competitions is not really all that much, but at some stage I would have needed uh, more pictures winning awards than, than actual awards, if you see what I mean. It's, it's, it's a balancing act, but it's interesting to do. I like, you know, I, I like the strategy part of, um, of entering FIAT competitions. Um, this was another one that tells a story, again, taken in Italy, uh, not far from, from Florence. And my friend got me um, a pass into um, uh, a nature reserve that was um, set up specifically for, for photographers. And um, uh, the story here is the two uh, blackwing stilts uh, are trying to nest on this um, piece of mud here and the, the, um, the terrapin, the tortoise, is, is actually sitting on their nest. Um, so that, that told a story, I think. I've got another picture, actually probably better than this one, um, of the same, of the same um, scene. Um, but that's been quite successful, good, good um, acceptance rate. 
Um, as I say, I try and fulfil all, all the categories if I can. And actually by doing that, it, it forces you into, into other areas of photography that maybe you're not, um, not particularly familiar with, which is good because it, it you know, broadens your, your scope really. Uh, and another friend of mine had a um, um, house in Carcassonne in the south of France. And on Bastille Day, they have this most tremendous firework display, the best I've ever seen, and it lasts over half an hour. And all the fireworks are um, set off from these battlements of the castle. So I went down there and took a lot of pictures, and I've used uh, this in a few, uh, few travel sections. And that um, won an award somewhere. Uh, this one, I got a press pass. It was taken in Trafalgar Square. Uh, and on um, the Chinese New Year, they have a big show there. So I got a press pass for that show. And I was standing uh, quite near the front and took this picture. The background was awful, but, you know, I managed to, um, to change it. So the, um, the acrobats stood out. And um, that's uh, done okay in the color section. Again, more than 50% um, acceptance rate. And as I say, it's interesting to keep, I keep a spreadsheet of uh, the acceptances. Yep. And it's interesting to see who likes what, where. Um, so that's, that's quite an education. As I say, you, you tend to learn uh, what people like. And I think that's, that's important. I mean, if you're a commercial photographer, uh, you don't go to a customer and say, you know, I'm a great photographer, uh, here's my pictures. You go to your customer, if you want to be successful, and you say, what sort of pictures would you like? This is what I can produce for you. And I, 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 I see these competitions that way. Okay. It's, it's hung again, Paul. I don't know what's causing this. Maybe it's maybe it happens when someone comes in. Shouldn't that shouldn't cause a problem. Just click on your screen there again, and then try the key to go on to the next one. Really, don't know why this is happening. It didn't happen on Tuesday, did it? It did not. No. Escape's not working. <coughs> so, go on to the next one, see what happens. What's the slideshow? No, slideshow is a problem. We tried that. Um, so, I mean, you can see this all right, can you? Yep. Okay. Yep. I hope we don't get a, a, a problem again. Slide, slideshow seems to hang worse than, I mean, we. This worked for us when we practiced on Tuesday, but slideshow didn't. Um, anyway, this is one of my China pictures. I'll, I'll talk about these later in, in the um, in the Amphiat panel. Um, but it's you know it's one of the reasons I went towards um, monochrome. So I, I've the other thing, Paul. I've I've got a line a menu on the top of my screen, which I'm. I, that'll always be there because you're sharing. So, okay. Yeah. The, I can't see that part of this. So I, I don't know. Ah, oh, there we go. Thank you. Um, so that's got a, a reasonably good success rate as a print and won an award. Uh, this little fellow is locally very common. In fact, it's a pest. It's an edible dormouse. Um, and they were released in this area in 1903. Well, they weren't released, they escaped because they're, they're little devils. And they, they um, actually hibernate uh, in the foundations of my house. Um, so I caught this one. Uh, I've got a, a license to catch them and kept them in the garage and took some pictures. But it's very, very uncommon in England. It's only just locally, um, locally that they're a pest. They're only in this little area just to the west of London. So that's done okay. I usually use it in, in, in the UK because it is an uncommon thing. Naturally, they come from um, the Balkans in Italy, I think. Uh, this picture was taken in, um, in Portugal in uh, 
there's a, a Catholic shrine called Fatima. And um, in 1917, three children had a vision uh, and it's become a big place of pilgrimage now. And uh, on the 100 year anniversary, which is 2017, the Pope uh, went to Fatima and beatified one of the children. And I thought this is going to be interesting because I know there'll be some interesting people there. And I walked around and this lady's praying. There's an, I've got another picture a little bit later on from the, the same series. Um, so that's done okay, 50% hit rate again. Uh, uh, this one, I did, personally, I didn't think this was going to do very well. It's from Iceland. And there's um, uh, a glacier called Fjallsalen, uh, just uh, about a mile away from the famous Jokulsalen glacier. And so we went down there and there were very few people there. And I found this um, iceberg that looked like a garden gnome that had fallen over. And I thought, well, that's interesting. I'll, I'll take a picture of that. And then there was a, a competition, I think, in one of the, one of the Balkan regions for uh, um, mountains. So uh, I was looking around to see if I got any mountain pictures. Uh, and I put this one in and it, um, it won an award. Yeah, I suppose it's different. It looks like a collapsed polar bear for me. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, I mean, I think the I think the answer is when you when you're um, entering competitions, is to, to to think what what the customer wants, what they what they're like, and what what they'll be interested in. I mean, you wouldn't send a picture like this to um, to Norway, I suppose, because glaciers are common up there. But in Australia, it uh, it, it might be much more interesting. And I, I've always found that the fascinating thing is uh, just, oh, okay. The menus come up, just come up again, Paul. Uh, oh. Paul, uh, on and the so right side, there are three dots. And if you just press with your mouse there, there'll be a window. And over there, you can choose hide floating panels. I guess that will help. Well, what happened just now, Paul, is someone entered the room. And then I sort of lost control of my. I can't see the three dots though. That you're talking about. Okay, if you press it and move it on the on your screen. Oh, okay, got you. Yeah. What do I do? Uh, press the three dots, and yeah. uh, when the menu opens, uh, press hide floating. Uh, control something like that high floating meeting control. control yes yes okay I, I still can't use my arrow key and I, what i noticed paul is somebody entered the meeting room and i lost control of it mm. that seems to be what's happening i don't know why uh paul maybe it's because he's also co-host Maybe we shall uh, remove him from co-host and let him share his screen and that. Uh, the yes, if you, yeah, if you could do that, Barack, that would be great. Thank you. Yeah, I will do that. Yeah. Uh, sorry, there is nothing like stop him from being co-host. I guess host can make that, Paul. Um... When you press the more button the right of his name okay maybe that's the reason anyway. okay i muted that okay so Barack, when, when i see press the more button i don't see the option to allow paul to right. share his screen yeah. then this will go on yeah, yeah. okay Sorry. Can, can, can we carry on now yes here we go yeah okay so this one, um, I always think some of the best pictures are actually on, on your doorstep. And this one was about three miles away. And uh, because you're at home all the time, you know when the weather conditions were good. And on this particular occasion, we had two, two hoar frosts, uh, one day after the other, which is very, very rare. And so you had a frost on a frost. Um, and, and the conditions were just fantastic. And uh, just this field just up the way, 
they were growing sunflowers for the, the, the birds for winter, winter feed. And so I went up there and, uh, and took this picture. And that's done really well for me. Um, a lot of people seem to like it. And it was, um, yeah, it was highly commended in landscape photographer for the year. I don't know what's happened, it's hung again. No idea why this is happening. So that's weird. That's really weird. Um, because as I zoom in and out, I, I release the lock on it for some reason. Mm, very uh, strange. Must be, a, <coughs> must be a software bug. Anyway, uh, as a print, this has done really well. It's, um, it's been accepted a lot and won an award. Uh, this picture, I had a, a short break in southern Germany. I went to a town called Fussen. And um, the night I was there, we had a really heavy snow, about a foot of snow. And I, I um, dug my car out in the morning and went for a drive. And the Germans are very good at clearing the snow, so there's no problem. And um, the people had let these horses out, and they're called um, halflingers, and they're beautiful horses. And it was nice to, to get a picture in the snow. Um, that's that's done okay. Now, this is another one from that Italian um, Italian reserve. Uh, it's uh, I, I went there specifically because I knew there were. Uh, hawfinches there, and they're very rare in England. And this top bird is a hawfinch, and the bottom bird is a greenfinch. Um, and I, I really had a, a smashing day in um, in Italy that, that year. I think it was about May time. Um, hasn't done it especially well. I was quite surprised at this because it's one of the better ones I got from this series. You'll see some more too, but it's won an award anyway. Oh, that's just judges for you. Yeah, well, it, you, know, you, you win some, you lose some, don't you? Exactly. Right? That's exactly. the way I look at it. And this is why it's interesting to, um, you know, to see what different judges' tastes are like. I mean, this is a very similar picture. This is the Mal Horfinch. Maybe because there's only one bird you can concentrate his, on his head and, and on that massive bill. And it just shows you how, uh, how strong that... Um, that bill is, it's like a parrot. Um, but that's done better than the previous one. It's been accepted twice and won an award. Two out of two. I was surprised at this one. I had I was a bit short of creative, creative pictures. Um, so I put two pictures together um, that I'd taken in London. One of a, a diver, a girl was diving for, for peaches and another one of some flames. It was the, um, the anniversary of the, the Great Fire of London. So I, I, I put, what, put the picture together um, and I say I, I fill all the boxes in the competition, sent it away. And it was, um, hasn't been accepted a lot, but it won an award somewhere in, in um, Central America, I think. Uh, this is another funny one that you either like or you don't. Um, we, I was with a friend and we were, uh, do I, I, I think I, uh, yeah, someone entered the room. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was with a friend and we, we, we stopped by this farm and, and I was, said, let's go and photograph the pigs. And we noticed that the pigs were running up and down the pen as the farmer was driving up and down in his car. Uh, it was, they were chasing his car thinking they'd be fed. So we photographed these pigs running. And I said, I know just what I'm going to do with that when I get home. I'll put it between two racing dogs and I'll call it Pigs Will Fly. Ah, it's gone again. It, it, that's what, when it's happening, Paul. It's when, um, when someone comes into the room. Anyway, that won an award in Australia. I think they had a set subject for, for humour. And um, it's very difficult to get um, humorous pictures, but, um, and it's very difficult to get pictures that, that uh, 
you know, people appreciate because everyone's got a different sense of humor. This one was, um, this one was taken locally. Uh, it's a short-eared owl and they were, here, here we, we'll, we'll have a problem again. Now, what, what do I do, Paul? Do I? Do, 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 do nothing, Burak is looking after that. Okay. Um, so this is um, one of about four or five short-eared owls that came as, as winter visitors to a new plantation just to, about 30 miles north of London. And we all went over there and took a series of pictures. Um, and because it was a new plantation, there were some nice colours in the background. And this works quite nicely as a print. No, it's, it's hung again. It's, it's, it's late entrance that, that's the problem, I think. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, so you have to uh, leave the room and uh, join again, and we shouldn't make you co-host. That is the solution, but I don't think that that is applicable as of now. No, no, so, no, 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 no. So, so we will stop, unfortunately, when somebody else ans enters because you're co-host. Okay, so this is, uh, works quite well as a print. Um, and um, uh, it's, it's won an award. I've locked again. There we go. So this is an example of, of what I was saying about, you know, think about what the customer wants. So when you're um, entering uh, an exhibition on the other side of the world, uh, this would be a travel picture to them. It's actually on my doorstep. I can get into a tube and get down there in an hour. Um, so I've got lots of travel pictures on my doorstep. But it's, it's a question of thinking out the box because this wouldn't be a travel picture in England. Uh, and that's done okay abroad. It's got a, a reasonably good hit rate. Uh, well, other... I think for some people, when you say hit rate, do you mean the number of times it's accepted into the salon? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, acceptance rate. And not necessarily an award, but I mean, you have to be accepted to win an award. So mm -hmm. that, that's the first step. And then if you get a fairly good acceptance rate, what I call a hit rate, then there's more chance that you'll get an award if you see what I mean. So that, that's, that's how I look at it anyway. It's, I say it's, it's like a strategic game and I, I quite enjoy it. Um, this is another thing that's um, local to, to Britain. We've, I mean, the industrial revolution started in, in the UK and we've got several uh, museums, uh, living museums based around the Industrial Revolution. This one is, is up in, uh, in Telford in Shropshire, and it, or Colebrookdale, and it's, it's where the first iron bridge was built. And there's a, a really big museum up there and you have old machines and uh, old factories and, old, and people dressed in old costumes. So you get a lot of, a lot of pictures like that um, in, in the English competitions. But when you send them uh, to other countries, that's maybe less familiar. Uh, so this has had quite a, a, a decent success rate. Uh, again, uh, this was a picture from the Edinburgh Tattoo. And each year at the start of the Edinburgh Fa Festival, they have a, a big um, parade on the parade ground outside the castle. And I managed to get a press pass for this. I tried again and I haven't been successful, but this year I was lucky. Uh, and I was standing right on the parade ground with the, um, the pipers and, the, and the, you know, the, the, um, the drum major coming towards me. So that was, that was really exciting. Um, and funnily enough, this has actually won an award. It won a, a travel medal in, um, in Bristol. But normally I'd think, you know, I'd expect it to do better in, in another country. This is a fairly common picture in England. It's, um, it, it's in one of the London stations. And um, 
you see quite quite a lot of this subject. The difficulty is here is is actually getting the picture with the colours right because th these colours uh, on the left hand side uh, are moving all the time. Um, so what is blue on the far left now will suddenly be blue um, in the middle, which is really not what I wanted. And the other the other trick really is to, to get the um, to get the underpass empty with only one person as a as a, a subject. Um, so that took a while. It's, it's better to go there late at night, actually, when there are not so many people around. But that's that's done that's done quite well. Lucky with this one. Um, I helped someone uh, to do their ARPS, I think it was, panel, a friend of mine, and we spent about two hours, you know, arranging the panel so, and choosing the pictures. And uh, it looked really good when we'd finished. And she said, oh, I'm grateful for the time. Um, is there anything I can do to repay you? And she got this beautiful girl, um, picture of a beautiful girl in this panel. And I said, I'd, I'd love to photograph her if there's a chance. The girl was Spanish, her name's Belen, lives in Madrid. Um, and she, she wasn't available, but she came back two years later and my friend said, Belen's here, would you like to join us? And I said, oh yes, please. And I had a fantastic morning photographing this girl. She's really lovely and brilliant with the horses. So I did quite well out of that. Um, the other thing that you learn is, is uh, that Germans and Austrians seem to like pictures of really pretty women. So, um, so I'll, I'll tend to, to use that in the, in the open color section if I'm entering an Austrian competition. This is the other one from the, uh, the, the still pictures I, I showed you earlier. And this is probably more obvious about what's, what's going on. Uh, the male's on, on the left here and he's looking, trying to work out what to do about this terrapin and how to get rid of him. Um, but um, I think there's, there's quite a nice story there. That's had a, I mean, I've used that a lot and it's, it's done really well for me. That's won two awards. This one I was quite surprised, surprised at. It's in Yellowstone um, in a place called Tangle Creek. And you do see quite a lot of pictures from there. Uh, but what's unusual about this one, at least for, for me, is there's a fog bow there. And fog bows are like rainbows, but there's no color in them. And the fog bow is produced uh, 180 degrees to the sun, whereas a rainbow is produced 90 degrees to the sun. Uh, and that's why you don't get the colors in a fog bow that you do in a rainbow. But they're, they're very rare. I've only ever seen two in my life, um, but they might be more, um, more common in this area. But it was nice to get a picture of it. I didn't think anybody would appreciate that, but it's, um, it's had quite a good success rate. And it works, seems to work well as a print as well. Now, this is another one from, you know, the same series I told you about. If you've got conditions like this and an opportunity like this, don't just take one. Take lots and lots of different ones because you can use them all. The only thing I would say is that when you come to submit for the fair um, levels, you're asked to send a portfolio in, and I wouldn't send this one and the other picture in because they, they're not sufficiently different, but you can count them in, in the overall um, total, if you like, but not in the portfolio. It's funny, a funny thing that, that's not been as successful in acceptances, but more, more successful in awards, sometimes happens. Here's another one from, from Italy. Um, quite a strong story, I think, here anyway. And I always think it's like those terrapins are, are um, waiting for a bedtime story from the old heron there. Um, and, and I was lucky to get a nice background on that one too. Nice light as well that day. And that's, that's at 100% acceptance rate as a print. Now, this was from one of my... Um, one of my Chinese trips. In fact, it was the, the trip uh, Janos went on like this one. It was the, the trip we went to Tibet. Um, and I'm sure he remembers it very well. We went into a school and all these children are dressed up in um, costumes and it was a fantastic photo opportunity. Uh, really was nice. Ah, we've just had someone enter again. 
I think. Is there any way around this or do I? Uh, well, the only solution, as I told you, is to, for you to leave the meeting and then rejoin again. And we're not going to appoint you as co-host. Okay. In um, this way, uh, Paul, can we do this? Just wait for two minutes for everybody and we can or, solve. Or, or, or we could carry on and hope no one else comes in, if you like. <laughs> That's if also an option. Stuck. Whatever you like. Ah, I've, I've fixed it. Okay. So, so I, I enter this one in travel and, and um, sometimes it's successful. It's, it's done okay uh, acceptance wise. But I love the little fellow in the front. I mean, it would be difficult to take pictures like this in the West now, I think, but they were really good to us when we went to bed. Fantastic photo opportunities. Um, this is um, uh, a hawker, a uh, migrant hawker, um, and something that's a lot easier to do with them um, with, with the new mirrorless cameras because you have a much faster um, a much faster shutter speed. Um, uh, well, you can use much motor drive is much faster. Um, but uh, uh, got another guy came in. Um, but yeah, I used that in the early days and it seemed to do pretty well. Yeah, I'm locked up again. So this is um, about 50% success rate and a couple of awards. Uh, another one, we, we've got um, about 60% of the world's um, mute swans in the UK and it, it's a very common subject here, but um, not so much when you send, you realize you, when you send pictures away that, um, that uh, you know, people do like them. I mean, I know you have them in America now, but, um, Lots of countries don't. And I sent a picture of swans to, to China, which is how I got to, on the trips in the first place. It's the picture that won the gold medal. Not this one, but another one. Uh, and that's won a couple of awards in different places. Ah, I've locked again. There we go. Now this is always astonishing to me because this is uh, all around the coast of England uh, or all, uh, all around the coast of Britain and Ireland uh, are puffin colonies. And everyone goes to the Farne Islands and the Salties in Ireland um, and takes pictures of puffins. They're very, very common subjects in competitions here. But if you send a puffin picture to the Mediterranean or further afield. They've never seen them. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's something different for them and something special. So I say it's, it's knowing what, um, what your customers will be interested in really. So this is done, I mean, astonishingly well as, as far as I'm concerned, 13, out of, 13 acceptances out of 15 tries and two awards. Difficult to believe. I, um, I, I got a press pass for a rehearsal of uh, Snow, Out, Snow White on Ice uh, down at the Albert Hall and took this picture. Terrible background, but I, I fixed that in Photoshop. Uh, and that had quite a high success rate in the color section. This is another China picture, uh, which I'll talk about later. Uh, again, a good hit rate. I think it's the, the story. Uh, this one's from uh, an incredible place in Australia called the Pinnacles. It's about three hours drive north of Perth in Western Australia. And I was there one morning and there was the most incredible mackerel sky at sunrise. Um, and this was taken a bit late, later on after the sun had come up. 
and that's a normally gets entered in the, the travel section. Um, this is a, another one of those pictures I, I spoke about, which is probably um, peculiar to England. Uh, and it's, it's the old Victorians. Um, there's a, a group of actors called Ragged Victorians who travel around to these museums and different functions. Um, where you have uh, industrial archaeology. Um, and I took this one in, in the um, east end of London. And these two are uh, under, supposed to be undertakers. So I, I took it from below as if I was looking up at them. And that's done quite well in some places. Um, I like to, I mean, this is another thing that I've, I've learned to do. Um, and that's creative photography. I wouldn't say I'm an expert at it. Uh, and there's some very good creative photographers in England, especially in, uh, in the North. Um, and it's difficult to compete with them, but you know, you have to, you have to try if there's a creative section. And so I put this together. The, um, the model, I only you know, probably recommend, uh, probably remember the, the model was from Tibet. Uh, the deer is from um, the local woods, very rare to get a white one. Uh, and the onion tower is from from Germany, so it's a bit of a bit of a mixture that one. But it's uh, it's done okay, and um, come up away with a couple of awards. This is a, a similar thing. I took the the uh, the deer, as I say, the white ones are very rare, um, and I took this in one of the London parks. The subject and the background uh, is from the same day that I took those other other trees, but in a different location. Uh, and the normal colour for this, this type of deer, it's a fallow deer, the normal colour is, is dark. They, they vary quite a lot, but it's, I thought it was interesting to have this white, al almost albino, leucistic, I think is the proper word, um, deer with the, the dark ones in the background. Some people don't uh, recognise that as creative, but um, it's, it's a montage, so I always put it in the creative section. Um, this is a very common picture, you know, easy to take in England as well, um, two, two coots fighting and I think maybe it's the one in the middle that makes it interesting like a referee in a, in a boxing match and maybe it's all the spray around that people like, but this has been more successful than I expected and won three awards. It's interesting to talk to pe you know, good experienced people in your, your local camera club as well because um, I showed this to Peter Gennard, who's the competition secretary at Smethwick. And he said, that, that's a really good picture. I'll use that in the competitions. So, and I hadn't really um, thought much of it really, but it's, it has done well. Just another picture from that um, same setup, slightly different because the, the bird on the right is a, a female. Uh, and it's, um, Normally the female is, is the less dominant, but because it's a bigger bird, she's seeing off the male greenfinch. And that's won three awards. I probably use that more often than the, than the others there. Now this was the other one I was talking about that was from, from, from Lisbon, from that, um, that anniversary at, uh, uh, where the children saw the vision and when the Pope came. And it, it was interesting to walk around. Um, it's a really big amphitheatre, this, this, this place in Fatima. Uh, and you get some fascinating people. And I, I was astonished as to what was going on here um, because it looks like the nuns really giving this, um, this um, vicar a, a, a real good telling off. Um, and this, isn't, this is an English joke. I don't know how it translates. But we always have. We always used to say the the um, uh, the bishop said to the actress jokes in England, and um, I said I told you not to talk to this actress. That's what the title's about. But I think that's quite funny. Uh, fairly straight straightforward nature picture. Not um, not wildlife, but nature because I took it in in my front room with an artificial background. Um, and what you can do. These are silk moths. Um, you can buy you can buy the the larva, the the chrysalis, uh, and wait until they come out and photograph them. Photograph them; they'll be pristine, not not um, a scale missing. 
Uh, and the thing about silk moths is that they have no mouth to feed with. Uh, they're only alive in adult in, in the adult form in the final phase for about two weeks and they, they mate and then they die. They don't feed at all when they're a, a moth. So it's not really cruel to keep them and hopefully you can maybe breed them as well. But you can you can buy these these cocoons for, for fairly cheaply. And um, you know, good photo opportunity as well. Lovely, lovely creatures. This is um oak silk moth from North America. Uh, and it's won, won three awards. Uh, this was from, um, there's, a, there's the two parks in London, in West London. Uh, Richmond Park's the, by far the biggest one. And there are, there are deer there that are wild, but used to people, so you can get quite close to them. Um, and sometimes you can get some interaction with um, other things like this. Um, is a is a jackdaw, and I think this is this has done well in the competitions because um, again it tells a story. It's it's like the jackdaw's whispering in the deer's ear, and it's like telling him a secret, and and I think that works well with people. And that's been I've got two of them. There's another one coming up. One's a, a, a portrait, and this is a, a landscape. Um, but they've both been very successful. successful. Uh, eight of eight out of nine uh, acceptances and and three awards, and this one, which was the next next shot with a, a you know different um, different camera angle, and um, that's I've used that more, uh, but that's won three awards as well. They say the best I said before the best pictures are on your doorstep. This literally was. Um, I went out of my house and I was going to trim. Uh, a small tree that had grown uh, just in the garden outside my front door. And when I looked closely, I saw these um, sawfly larva. And I thought, oh, well, that'll be a good picture. So I, um, I actually removed the, um, removed the twig they were on and set them up with, with nice light uh, and took a picture and then returned them to the wild. Again, it's, you know, I wouldn't call it wildlife because it, it technically wasn't. Um, but it is a nature picture. And that's done, that's done much better than I thought it would. I think it's the shapes that appeal to people. This is a picture on my, my local reservoir, which is about uh, seven or eight miles away. And it's nice to go there in, in winter. They had about a hundred swans there at one time. And I'd, I'd get up early every morning and, and go over just at sunrise. And when you do things a lot, you get to know you get to know your subject better, and over the period of uh, of about three years, I could understand what these swans would do and when they do it, and I knew they'd fly first thing in the morning and last thing at night, uh, and I knew where they'd fly roughly, uh, so I could be in the right place. And that's the sort of picture that I used uh, in the Beijing International that took me to China, not the exact one, but very similar. And that's done quite well in competitions. Um, again, this, you either like this one or you don't. Um, I'm, I'm surprised it's been as successful as it has. It was taken in, in, in woods in this, this area I live, the Chilterns. And because there's a, quite a steep slope um, on the side of the Chilterns, we often get fogs on the edge of the slope in winter and they'll last all day. Um, so I, I went out in this fog and saw this group of trees and I thought it was, they were arranged in a way that looked like the trees were talking to one another. Um, and I called it a, um, the coven. I don't know if you know what the coven is, but it's, um, you know, when witches gather together mm -hmm. and um, tell secrets. Well, that seems to have done, uh, say, better than I expected with three awards. Uh, this is a picture I made up, actually. Um, it, it might look natural, but it's not. Um, the the uh, background of the picture is, um, is is my local valley, uh, and the uh, the um, fisherman in the boat is from uh, one of my Chinese trips. Um, but if if it's an open or a creative section, unless it's uh, traditional rules, you can do that. And that's one four awards. That quite surprised me. You never know, really, so you have to try these things. 
This is Belen again, uh, a different picture, uh, a different sort of picture. And I've um, changed the color a little bit, which some people like and some people don't. Um, say she was a gorgeous model though. I'm really lucky there. Um, I think this works well because it's, again, it's a story and it's timing. Uh, it's up on the Northumberland coast where we get a lot of um, Arctic terns nesting. And this was late in the season and um, the, the youngsters had moved off the nest and were sitting on the beach. So I went down there and I just sat, I've got 500 millimeter lens and I sat um, about 30, 30 yards away from the youngster. Uh, and when the parent came to feed it, I, I was uh, ready to take a picture. And that's done really well for me. It's done quite a lot of awards. Again, a creative one. Um, as I said, I, I spent a long time photographing swans and I got some nice pictures. So I um, adapted them into, uh, into some of my creative shots. And in fact, I've got a whole series now. I don't know if we'll have time to show you, but I've, I've got them here. And that's done, done really well in places. You find some, some places creative pictures uh, are appreciated and some they aren't. So you have to just have to find out by experience. Another one from that um, that trip to uh, to Italy. Um, this was again a lovely light, and um, I just managed to uh, to get a picture of the uh, stilts mating. Uh, it's quite a precarious um, operation when you've got legs that long, but. Uh, over time, when you watch them, it's very clever how they do it. It's quite a stylized display that leads up to the mating procedures. And I'll show you another one after that's, um, uh, that's, that's the final, final stage in this procedure. But they're lovely birds and very, um, very interesting to photograph. Uh, and that's won seven awards, so that's done well. Does well as a print as well, that one. This is another one from my, my China trip and it's in the um, M, M Fiat panel. So I'll talk about this later. And that's won seven awards. Another one from the, the same setting, you'll recognize the sun, sunflower head, but two green finches this time. And this is probably, although it's you know not maybe as, as interesting to a, to a nature photographer as the one with a whore finch, I, I suppose it's the, um, the beak to beak situation and the the the, uh, the attitude of the upper bird, the the way the wings are, that's made this more successful than the others, and it's won seven awards. Again, this is a very very common picture in England. It's the the rose window. Um, it's it's in 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 London, uh, down, just down the Thames, and a, a lot of people take this. I think maybe why this one works is because it's I arranged it so you have the the Fibonacci spiral, um, and with the the eye if you like on on the on the um, on the geometric mean, and you've got quite a nice lead in there, and the light leads you to the the central window. Um, but that's that's done much much better than I expected. Eight awards. Another picture from the trip to Italy. We went down to. Uh, uh, to southern Tuscany, um, Quirico, forgive my Italian pronunciation, all, all you, San Quirico, all, all you Italian people who are watching, um, but you, you'll know this place, it's, it's very, very famous in Italy, and I got up one morning and there was a beautiful dawn with mist in the valley, and, um, and took that one, and that does okay in, in some countries in, in the travel section. So about a 50% success rate, but it's won a lot of awards. Um, now this was one where I got two hawfinches actually fighting. Uh, and this goes well in Britain as well because um, British nature photographers realize how rare this bird is. Uh, so that's won nine awards. Again, this, we're coming to, to the most successful pictures. And as, as I said, this is, I, I don't even think it's, particularly good picture, but, um, and it's very common in England. I, I doubt if it would do well in, in this country, this picture, but it's, 
it's won 10 awards in, in different competitions. And as I say, it does seems to do well in, in Mediterranean countries. Again, this is, you know, this is a classic picture in, in England. It's the Seven Sisters uh, down in Sussex. And um, I mean, people, have, photographers have been coming for years to take this picture with the, the road leading to the fisherman's cottage. Uh, you know, you, you see it everywhere in England, but again, it's a travel picture and it's, it, it tells the story of a country, I guess. And again, 10 awards. <coughs> one picture, bless you. Um, this is a different picture um, to the ones of Belen. I saw this girl, her name's Natalie, and I saw her crossing the road uh, with this horse and she just washed him. She loved this horse. Uh, his name was Badger. And um, I, I don't often chase women, not at my age anyway, but I, I, I saw this horse and I thought, I've got, I've got to get a picture of that. He's a fantastic horse. He, he was glowing um, because she just washed him. His, his actual coat was glowing. And so I, I turned the car around quickly and I chased after this girl. And I said, look, this might sound strange, but I'm a photographer. And I think your horse is fantastic. And is it possible to get some pictures of him? And she, I mean, she was a bit startled at first, but she said, okay. And now I gave her my, my card as well. So she could see I was serious. And over a period of years, I got to, to know Natalie and Badger very well and took a lot of, um, a lot of um, pictures of them. And um, th this horse was, was Natalie's, um, boyfriend really uh, she didn't have a boyfriend and I said you know I, you know what I'm going to do is when you get married we'll take a picture of you and your husband and the horse and she said um, oh I think that'll be a long time I haven't got a boyfriend at the moment and it's probably because she was spending all this time on the horse and I said okay what we'll do is we'll take a picture of you in a wedding dress and the horse and when you when you get married I'll clone your husband in so we'll have that picture. And it's a good job I did because the horse is dead now and Natalie's still not married. Um, but one day, one day we'll put the picture together. But a lot of people like this. And again, I think it tells a story. And I've used it a lot in the color section. And a lot of people like it. This is another one from Tibet. Again, I'll talk about it later if I get a um, chance to talk much. But it's one of my favorites from Tibet. She was lovely. And that's quite, quite a good acceptance rate, 18 awards. And I was surprised at this one. I was out with a friend photographing um, birds in Norfolk. And uh, I got my long lens on my, hundred, uh, my 500 millimeter with a 1.4 converter, because we were trying to photograph these birds and the, and the heavy tripod as well. And we were walking around this reserve and didn't get any pictures of the birds, but I could see these horses over in the distance. And I said to my friend, just, just hold, hold on a minute. I quite like a picture of that. And so I took the picture and came back and I said, hmm, that's quite nice. It didn't really work as, um, as a color picture, the background's green. So I worked on it in mono and I, I, I thought, well, this is, this is quite nice. It's like yin and yang, the, you know, the, the Chinese shapes. Um, and I, I've used that quite a lot in competitions and it, it's, been my most second most successful picture and it works well either as projected or um, or a print um, so as I say that's my second most successful and that's this is my, my my most successful yet and it's in the same place in Italy and I noticed the the, the ritualized performance of these stilts and when they've mated and the, the I mean, the female obviously has to be very cooperative because of the length of the male's legs. But when they've mated, he sort of falls off her back. And then he gives her a, a cuddle, puts his, puts his wing around her and gives her a cuddle, which is, you know, very sweet and anthropomorphic. It, you know, you have a, a human emotion going on. So this, I think, tells a story uh, and its nature. And, you know, that's it's... it's work really well for me. And uh, I've, I've won 29 different awards with this one. And 
this and the previous one have, have really helped me to build up the number of awards that um, that I needed to 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 get up to um, the Diamond Three because it's quite a difficult task. And this this was the challenge over over three years, and it was quite full on exhibiting. I entered um, 147 salons in different countries. Some of them were um, uh, were groups of salons, and um, in 110 of, of these salons, I, I managed to gain, gain some sort of award. This is the frightening thing. 4,741 um, pictures entered. They're not all different ones. Some, some will be the same, obviously. But if you consider each of those costs probably a euro or a dollar to enter, it's quite a lot of money. And probably a, a, I could have bought a good camera with the money, but I wouldn't have had as much fun, maybe. Um, and there's the other stuff at the bottom. Of, um, the, my average acceptance rate was 50%, just over. And uh, of that 50% I was getting accepted, one in 10 might win an award of uh, honorable mention or above. So I had a lot of fun doing that over three years and I'm pretty exhausted now. Um, so I'll have to find something else to do. So can you still hear me? We can indeed. Are we all, still, all still there? Yes, we are indeed. Thank you very much for that. I've, have I got time for the MV app? I've taken a lot of time, haven't I, with all these interruptions? We have done. I think if you could just very quickly show the MV app images, maybe to just take five minutes or so, uh, yep. and then we'd be at a 30 then at that stage. <laughs> OK. Sorry, it was, I've got this wrong. It's actually 2014. And as I said, I, I had these four trips to China um, thanks to uh, a success in a fiat competition. And um, fairly early on in my digital days, um, I mean, I was using six mega, megapixel cameras then. I'd love to go back and do it again. Uh, but when we went to Tibet, I'd only got um, a, uh, EOS 20D, I think it was. So I had to work very hard on the pictures to get uh, enough quality in them. Um, Yanis will know this. We we went up into the hills and they they showed us all these different tribes. There were 30 tribes in Tibet, uh, and they were all in different costumes dancing. Uh, this was on the Jinan trip. Uh, they took us into a, a distillery, a rice wine distillery which I didn't think would be very promising. And it turned out to be absolutely fantastic. There were these um, muscular guys with their shirts off working hard in this steamy environment. Uh, and I got uh, two good pictures, two or three good pictures there that um, I used in the panel. This was the one you saw in the, uh, the classroom in Lhasa, um, which you know, gave me quite a few uh, good photo opportunities. I think we all did well there. This was a little fishing village just out of Lhasa called Jumpa. Um, and we were walking around the streets there and uh, this was a newborn calf. It still got the umbilical cord hanging from its, um, from his tummy. Um, and this uh, it got formed quite a nice relationship with this girl, which I, I liked, excuse me. This is another one from Jumpa. Um, and uh, I, I, I would have been interested in taking the next picture to this one, because the cat is just about to, to bite the girl's finger and she's totally unaware of it. So the next one would have been funny, um, but they're great kids. And it's not, it was lovely when you go to China and when we went to Tibet, you can't take children's pictures very easily in Europe. People are very suspicious of you and it's a real shame. This was outside a temple, Lo lovely lady. And um, she's, um, she was sitting opposite another guy and they were spinning this large prayer wheel in the background. And she's got her own smaller prayer wheel there that she's spinning, um, but a lovely face. Uh, this was back in Jumpa, uh, the fishing village. And I was quite surprised how so some of these people had, um, they, they, they looked like um, 
people you'd, you'd find in um, middle America, half Indian and half American. And he's got this hat on that's like a, an Australian hat turned up on one side. Um, but he was a great character. And I photographed his wife just outside this door as well. So there was two pictures there. This is another one of the, um, the group of dancers uh, taken, uh, taken on the Tibet trip. Uh, this one was taken at a place called uh, Sarah, which is a monastery where you, you might know about it. They have um, large arguments, well, they're debates really, and um, the, the monks are debating and they're very um, animated. Um, but this guy was uh, quite serene, very, very difficult to print because the, the ground underneath was very bright. So I had to work on that a lot. Uh, this was uh, inside a monastery and a tremendous opportunity that we were given uh, to photograph these old monks uh, during a service and while they were saying their sutras. Uh, this old guy was lovely, he actually moved his sandwiches so I could take a picture. Um, but another one, I, because of the quality of the, um, the camera I was using, I had to work on this a lot to make it acceptable. Uh, this was taken in the Bakor in, in, um, in Lhasa, which is um, an area where you get people's go to, um, people go to pilgrim, uh, pilgrims come to, to, um, to the Bakor and they prostrate themselves around. It's an old temple where the start of Tibetan Buddhism was, but there are also stalls in this market. This lady had just bought something and was putting a purse away, great character. We were lucky with this one because um, the, the, the Chinese people wanted, you know, they got an, uh, an itinerary and they wanted to take us from place to place. And we were going uh, through the mountains and we could see these um, uh, nomads in the background and the light was lovely. And, they, and we were begging them, our hosts to stop and they, they didn't, but the coach broke down. Uh, so we managed to get out and then I photographed this, this little chap um, outside his, um, his yurt there. Uh, so this was the other lady I took in, in jumper outside the, uh, outside the house. Uh, this old lady, lovely old lady, I, I took in a temple at Chengdi uh, and she was praying. Uh, that was a brilliant opportunity as well that we, we were given as um, part of the, um, you know, from, from the Chinese Photographers Association. And um, we had a great trip there. And this one uh, was uh, in, um, in the Patala, which is the, uh, the Dalai Lama's uh, uh, palace in, um, in the middle of Lhasa, big, big palace. And I think this, this has worked because of the relationship between the Chinese guard and the Tibetan uh, bookseller looking very sad. Uh, this one um, was, he was a guy, I, I was taken around a market uh, in a, a place west of Shanghai uh, by one of my Chinese friends. And um, he was selling crayfish. And I thought, what a great character. I'll, I'll take a picture of him. And the background looked interesting. And um, so uh, I said, can you ask this fellow if I can take his picture? And he said, no, I've got a, a, a jumper on that's 30 years old. And I said, well, that's why I want to take your picture, but um, I, I managed to get one. He didn't mind, I showed him. It was, it was fun. Uh, this was a guy who was in, in a palace, um, uh, halfway up a mountain in Tibet, and we had to climb up this mountain to, to get up there. Fantastic place. And um, people were leaving money in, in, the, um, in, in the prayers, and uh, he was collecting the money and, and counting it up. Another great character, lovely faces in Tibet. That's why, I, that's why I moved to photographing people really. And I love photographing people now. And it's, I can use my, my nature skills because you, you learn the timing. Um, and sometimes if you do things long enough, you, you can anticipate what's going to happen. Um, and that, I think that helps with the photography. Uh, this was a, an old guy we, we came across on the Jinan trip. He was uh, selling, um, you can see down the bottom left corner, these are sweet potatoes that he'd cooked on his uh, brazier here. And they, they, um, 
he, he, he wouldn't let me have a picture unless I bought one of the sweet potatoes. So one of the, the, the girls from the Chinese Photographic Association bought one and I managed to get a picture, but he, he was brilliant as well. And this was my, my I think my favorite from, from the Tibetan trip. You've seen it, but I, I, I just think she's lovely. And I say, it's so sad that you can't get pictures like this in, in, um, in English schools anymore. Um, lovely face and the concentration on those eyes is just beautiful, I think. Um, and I was really grateful for the opportunity. And it's something, if I hadn't entered that competition in uh, that FIAP competition, if I hadn't entered it in uh, Beijing and, and been successful, I wouldn't have had all these trips and all these pictures. And subsequent to that as well, I probably ought to tell you, uh, that I, I actually had the opportunity to meet the Dalai Lama as well. Uh, and that all came, it's all come about from one photograph being successful in one FIAP competition. So I've been really lucky and I'm really appreciative. And um, so I hope you've enjoyed the show. <laughs>